Size robot Michael Jackson. We programmed it to move according to some of the signature Michael Jackson moves, and we programmed a total of seven moves with the robot performing smoothly. Now I will talk about the robot design. For the base, we use wood and metal extrusions to make it. The base consists of four cut out metal extrusions and a square piece of wood that, that are attached to each other to form the base. Economic wheels are attached underneath so that the robot can turn and move sideways with ease. The materials used for the skeleton consist of wood and metal. The wood is used as a spine and the metal is mainly used for the limbs. The wood acts as the main support for the robot and the metal is used to construct limbs so that, the, so that the motors can control the movement of the robot. For the base, it is powered by an 11.1 volt battery, while the ring robot is powered by a 7.2 volt battery. The anti-gravity lean mechanism is done by adding weights at the spine to provide stability and balance out the load when the robot leans forward. Now, I will share about the electronics that we have used in our robot. We have chosen to use a microcontroller called the ESP32 because of its compatibility with many IoT applications, its cheap price, and its small size, which also makes it compact. We used it to control our servo motors, which act as the limbs of our robot, and the DC motors, which are attached to the base of our robot. Why do we use servo motors for, our, for our, the limbs? Servo motors are light, yet powerful enough to support the other body parts of the robot. They are also en energy efficient, so the batteries can last longer. Yet, while the DC motors are compact and easy to control. Adding on to the anti-gravity lean mechanism, we chose servo motors as they are, um, they are precise, and easy to control. Uh, now I shall hand the time over to Singyu. The software we used was IoTY, a block-based programming website designed by our coach, to code the ESP32 and the stepper motor. Firstly, we started with the base of the robot. 
To, to make it easier to code, we created my blocks, which are basically functions. Apart from the forward, back, and turn my blocks, we also created a move sideways my block as we were using mechanism wheels. Secondly, we programmed another ESP32 in charge of the server motor. We made a spreadsheet to record the angle of the server motors in each position of the dance moves. Afterwards, we would transfer the angles into the code. Thirdly, we had to synchronize the code in both the base and the skeleton of the robot. The ESP32 that controlled the robot would be the master that transmits to the other ESP32 in that controlled the base so that it knows when to run. Finally, we programmed the stepper motor, which was in charge of the mechanism for the anti-gravity lean dance move. We faced many issues, like for example, when the turn my block will cause the base to turn more than we set. Thus, we had to do a lot of troubleshooting and figure out what exactly was the problem. Sometimes it could be that the gyro was not working, or we had to use tweening for the movement of the limbs. Tweening makes the server motor slow at the start and end, but fast in between. This is how we approach the software design of our robot. This video displays when we put the code and electronics together. Now I shall hand the time over to Dean. Throughout the competition, we have faced many issues and challenges in the hardware point of view. Such challenges include problematic materials within the motor to work with, as this causes failures resulting in time to troubleshoot the problem. Base motors will also smoke once in a while due to faulty wiring. And we also question ourselves on how to apply the counterweight to the board to prevent the board from tipping over while doing the anti-gravity lean. After a few weeks, we found several methods to counteract these issues. Examples will include changing it from a motor with plastic gears to a motor with metal gears. We also swapped out with other better quality motors. And as for the counterweight, we used trigonometry and its mass to calculate the best possible weight for the counter. Now, we will share about what we learned from this experience. I learned how to use raw materials and non-off-the-shelf electronics to make a life-size humanoid robot. I learned about how to handle hardware equipment while in a workshop. I learned how to use trigonometry when we were creating the mechanism for the anti-gravity lean dance move. I learned how, a me how mechanism wheels work and how to properly construct a robot with just raw materials. And I learned to use different tools such as jigsaw and the pipe cutter, etc.